get ready to drop everything and get used to a whole lot more of these reusable totes. They announced it on Instagram. Over a thousand employees have now decided. 16 women gear up and are training all week to one day hopefully become a firefighter. Soon 20 minutes may be added to your commute. Why? This is because the ramp right behind us over here will be going under construction. Shots were fired at a woman in a gray car right behind me. As you can see, the back window is completely blown out. And one person is injured after industrial fire yesterday afternoon at a hemp processing plant. So we're about to do it now. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I mean, I think I'm ready. If a shooter were to enter the building, all you need to do is take this object, slip it onto the door, and then you are going to be locked in. Alan, I heard countless examples of business owners describing violent crimes they say are happening daily. Well, the vigil has just started. People are coming together, friends and family, to remember Tiffany. And they actually are just starting to light some candles to do just that. Took a can of cane just like this one, pulled it out from the top, and ran down the street. They're using this map, and they're going to be checking out some places some of which we checked out ourselves. I see something to your yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. Do we want to bring that out now or later? Let's bring I it think out now. now. I think now's a good time. I brought a little treat. Uh. Let's get started. Click on the Science Museum to learn about different types of tobacco. A unique approach to smoking prevention for kids is making its way onto the market, and the latest trends are featured. Everything with vaping is moving so quickly that we want to be able to update it as necessary. From the teen vaping epidemic to deaths to bans and no bans, information from Oregon Research Institute's Click City Tobacco is up to date. They're actually learning a lot about tobacco products and other substances via tech, so a lot of the information they're getting is on social media. There's entire YouTube channels about doing vape tricks and how to modify your jewel. The online program varies between lessons and demonstrations. Both contain nicotine and are very dangerous to your health. The heating element is what turns the liquid into vapor. And games. They're starting to form their attitudes and behaviors and perceptions of all these products. They're starting to think about if I'm in middle school and if I'm in high school and when I'm an adult, will I use these products? That's why it's designed to engage. In their level of nicotine starts to go down, a person will need and crave more nicotine. It has a good like mix between the text from before and from then the visual and then games. E mm -hmm. dip. It goes into the mouth and then the addictometer yeah. goes up. Teachers monitor while students go through 20 minute lessons. We want them to look forward to Click City Days, to think about it after they've completed it, to remember the lessons that they've learned, just be excited about it. Reporting in Eugene, I'm Stephanie Rothman. Elkhorn Brewery and its neighbors woke up to yet another day of vandalism. She took, went behind their garbage and my garbage and just started grabbing garbage and throwing it out. What is wrong? This is lawlessness. It's nothing new. In October, someone threw a lit bottle breaking glass. Weeks later, a painting was cut out right off their bathroom wall. Owner Stephen Sheehan told us he's spoken with homeless people in the area. Some of the answers he got were shocking. We're able to have services here and we can do drugs here. I said, do you do drugs right now? He said, I got meth on me right now. It's terrible. Yeah, it's just every day is like this. Chuala's restaurant and cantina owner Aaron Paleo shows us to the alley where she finds countless needles. Oh, I just get frustrated because I come in early to start my day and I, I can't start it until I clean up. She shows us where she cleaned up mounds of trash, space where there was once bushes that had to be taken out to prevent needles, and the empty space where a railing destroyed by vandals once stood. And then people say, well, why aren't you putting locks? Well, we have locks. We put on a lock every day, but they break them just as fast as we put them on. Neighboring Manola's Thai cuisine has the same problems. Every time I come, there's either somebody camping there, sleeping there with a bunch of garbage, I ask them to leave every single time because, you know, otherwise they won't move. He and the others say they feel like city officials don't care. If someone goes and vandalize your house and leave a mess on her house, then she will think, oh, it's real, right? But in the meantime, she just doesn't care. We believe in giving people second chances, but, you know, when we keep getting this every morning, every morning, you know, we're wearing thin. You know, us business owners are, are getting sick and tired. I don't know if you want to give that a smell. 
Smells like chlorine. Smells like chlorine. You want to taste it? Residents in Junction City are once again facing brown water running through their homes. Every day when you go to turn on the tap, you don't know if it's going to be brown today or you don't know if you're going to be able to do your whites in it today. The city proposed a solution. Use chlorine now and install pumps to flush the system this summer. They're attempting to remedy the situation by putting a Band-Aid on it. Here's the problem. You can flush those pipes until there's nothing left of the pipes. It's it's not going to cure the problem. The pipes are over 50 years old with minerals building up along the walls inside them. If you drink it, will it harm you? No. Is it fun to drink? No. I mean, nobody wants to drink brown water. Nobody wants to take a bath in a brown water. The line running to the state hospital in Junction City is four times the size of what it needs to be. The state doesn't want to change the agreement detailing how water is used. We were intended to use double what we are supposed to be using today because of the prison. Since we're not using that double, it takes longer for the water to get through that pipe. Yeah, it tastes... Like it tastes like it has a slight hint of chlorine, but I smell it more than I can taste it. The chlorine is meant to clear the system, but Hub says the water has been hurting his family, dog, and even plants for years. One day it's going to be brown, the next day it's going to smell like pool water, the next day it's not going to be that bad. But my point is, is that how much is too much? The city hopes their new plan will soon trickle down and help its residents. Reporting in Junction City, I'm Stephanie Rothman. It can happen anywhere, and so we have to train for this universally everywhere. School shootings have become common across the country. At least one shooting a week, 30 of them so far this year. What you're watching is training to help prevent casualties in face of an active shooter. Here in Western Oregon, most schools follow a program called ALICE, alert, lockdown, inform, counter and evacuate. Statistically, the police are not going to get there before the majority of the incident has taken place. So if that's true, then the first responders are not us. The first responders are the people in the situation. Lieutenant Mozan has trained six major school districts in our area. Most recently, he says the program has adopted a counter element as a last resort. We're using proven psychological concepts uh, of noise, distance, movement, and distractions to make it difficult for a person who wants to hurt somebody to fire a gun accurately. But they don't train everyone like this. That we're using the same Alice principles, but we're making it so it's more age appropriate because the way we would describe to 15 and 16 year olds is different than how we would talk with five and six year olds. While drills are the most visual reminder, the very first one you see when you enter a school is the vestibule at the front door. We want to know who's coming into our school buildings and be able to control that access. Another can be used on doors inside. If a shooter were to enter the building, all you need to do is take this object, put it over the door, and then you're going to be locked in. Unfortunately, as an administrator, I have to wake up every morning now thinking that this could happen um, in my building or my community. And so it's kind of the sad reality of, of uh, being um, an educational leader now. Junction City schools don't follow all of Alice, but instead use practices from the I Love You Guys Foundation, which focuses on getting out without confronting a gunman. In 2006, Young was a teacher at the Roseburg school shooting and helped in the aftermath of the UCC shooting. One of my own students had blood on him from the students, and it was just impactful. You never think you're going to face that. Junction City schools have numerous safety measures in place, including a vestibule, extra security cameras, numbered windows, personalized locks, and even tourniquets at the doors. Signs that in an ever-changing world where shootings have yet to become the new normal, our schools are getting ready.